Okay, so we're going to use Edge Animate to create a slideshow. And in order to do that, first thing I need to do is go ahead and create a new project. So I'll go ahead and do that. I want to be able to see my whole stage at one time. So I'm going to change this number right here to 50%. So let's go ahead and double click on it and type in 50 here. And then I'm going to drag this down like so. So that I can see the whole thing at one time. All right. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and add some buttons here. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool here. I'm going to select my rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a little button like so. And then I think I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple times. So if we go into the edit menu, we can say copy and we can say paste. And there's a shortcut here. So the next one, I'm just going to do a command V and paste that one in place. And you'll notice now that I have three buttons here, three rectangles. So I'll grab my topmost one and drag it over. And notice, by the way, that Edge gives you guides that help you align things vertically. So I'm going to go ahead and do that like so. So this is now centered on top of the other two, as you can see here. That looks pretty good. So I've got my three buttons now. Next thing I need to do is I need to bring in my artwork. So I'll go under the file menu here. I'll select import. And I've got three Apple pictures here. So I'm going to select the top one. Hold down my shift key. Select the bottom one. And then I'll select all three. And then I'll say open. All right, so cool. So the next thing I want to do is grab all three of these. And I want to drag them around to about right here. Okay, and that looks like that looks like a good spot for them. So what I want to do now is I want to align all three of these pictures so that they're on top of each other and they're centered. So in order to do that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect all three of them by just clicking somewhere. And the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, remove hide this picture right now so that I can align the one underneath it with the bottom one. So let me go over here. And I've got set element visibility right here. It looks like a little eye symbol. And I'm going to click on it. And that's going to hide that one for me. And then I'm going to select the picture right that's on top of it right here. And I'm going to drag it around until I get a crosshair. That means it's now centered on top of the picture right below it. And I'll let go. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn visibility back on for the Granny Smith apple here. Make sure that I have it selected. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this over and I'm going to make sure that I've got it in the crosshairs so it'll now be centered. Awesome. So now I've got all three of these centered. The next step I'm going to do is I want to set a keyframe for where these will end up on the stage. So I'm going to grab my playhead here and I'm going to drag it to right below, right before the two second mark. About 1.9 seconds will work just fine. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these again. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, select have my first one, top one selected, hold down the shift key, click on this one, and all three are selected again. So now what happens is I can set a keyframe, and I'll go ahead and set one for both uh, X and Y, even though I don't really need them. I'm just probably only going to need one. And so now you'll notice here I've got keyframes set for all three of them. Now I'm going to take my playhead and I'm going to move it back over here to the one second mark. And notice again that I have uh, auto keyframe mode enabled and I've got auto transition mode enabled. So when I take these and I drag them off the stage and notice I'm using this horizontal line here to make sure that they stay centered like so. And just drag them off the stage like so and let go. I now have an animation here for all three of them. And in fact, I can hit the play button here and they'll slide into the frame. Awesome. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is we want to stagger these so they come in at different times. So what we want to do now is I've got my Granny Smith apple. It's the topmost one. I think I want to have this one come in at last. So I'm going to grab right here at the very top of it. I'm going to drag it over to about the three second mark and let go. Now I'm going to take this one right here, my Gala apple here, and I'm going to drag this over to the two-second mark, like so, and let go. And you'll notice, by the way, there's a little gap here now between each of these animations, which is what I wanted. Um, wanted. And you'll see why I, I'm going to want them in a little bit. All right, so I've got th all three of these staggered now. And again, I can just go ahead and play them. 
and I can see that they now all come in at different times. Awesome. All right, so now what we want to do is um, we want to go ahead and uh, create a button action that will bring each of these in. All right, and so we're going to go ahead and wire up our buttons here so they actually do something. In order to do that, what we need to do is select our first button right here, like so, okay, and which is right now called rectangle, and we should probably rename these. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on it, and I'm going to call this one button one. Right over here, you'll see a little set of curly brackets, and it says open actions. So go ahead and click on that. And you'll get a pop-up here, and it'll give you a lot of options. Select click. What this is saying is that when someone clicks on this button, something is going to happen. And in our case, what we want to do is we wanted to have this button click go to the first animation. So we're going to say play from here. And you'll note there's a number here. This, this number is in milliseconds. So what's going to happen is when we click on this button, it's going to go to the one second mark in our animation and play. So that's exactly what we want. So we're going to go ahead and just close that one right now. All right, so now we want to do the same thing with this one right here. So let's go ahead and click on it. And that's, that's rectangle two, and we'll call this one button two. We're going to go ahead and rename these all like so and let's go ahead and click on our open actions button there and again we want to say click here and then again what we want to do is say play from and we're going to change this from one to two so now it's, it'll read 2000 okay and let's go ahead and close it and now we're ready to do our third button and you can probably guess what we're getting ready to do but let's go ahead and select that button and again I'll go ahead and rename this one button three like so go ahead and click on our open actions again click on click say play from like so and then right here where it says 1000 we're going to change this to 3000 so at the three second mark this button is going to play that animation all right, so now let's go ahead and close that out. Let's go ahead and see what's going to happen here when we play this back. So in order to do so, you can go under the File menu and say Preview in Browser, or there's a shortcut here, which is Command Return. Remember that this is probably one of the most important uh, uh, shortcuts that you'll know inside of Edge Animate. You'll be doing this a lot. And the reason why we have to do this is because interaction does not preview inside of Edge Animate. It only The interaction stuff that we're doing will only preview correctly inside of a browser. So let's go ahead and say preview in browser here. All right. And what's happening is our animation is automatically playing, which is not quite what we want just yet. But our, the good news is our buttons are working. So you can see here as I click on this button, it brings in it brings in that one, and then it brings in that one. Okay, so good news is it looks like it's working. All right. Okay, so cool. So our interactivity so far looks pretty good. It's actually working. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to go back to Edge Animate, and we'll see if we can do a little more work with this. All right, so the very next thing we want to do is we want to have it so that animation doesn't start automatically. So what we want to do is go all the way back to the beginning of our timeline here. Now, these buttons, you know, we were able to add an action to each of these buttons. You can actually do something kind of similar with your timeline where you can have something get triggered when the playhead gets to a certain point in your timeline. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure my playhead is at, the, at zero, zero. And I'm going to click on this right here where it says insert trigger. All right. Okay, and you'll see there are several options in here. This will look kind of similar to what we saw just a little while ago. And we want to click on Stop. All right. And let's go ahead and close it out. So now what's going to happen is when this animation starts, it's immediately going to stop. And it's not going to do anything until we hit these buttons here, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead again and let's preview that. So I'm, this time I'm just going to hold down my command key and hit re return. 
like so. And you can see now the animation isn't, isn't uh, playing automatically, but when I click on a button, sure enough, there we are. And if I click right here, okay, awesome. So this is now almost there. It's getting really close to what we want. But one of the problems that we're running into now is um, it's playing it's it when we it's playing all the animation up to a certain point and we want it to just basically play just one part of the animation when we click on each of these buttons so when we click right here for instance it only brings that one apple in and not both of them and we click this one and it, it just brings that apple in so there's a couple more things that we need to do here so let's go ahead and close this preview again let's go back to edge animate all right so we added a stop motion action right here to this timeline. So let's go ahead and do the same thing right here as well. All right, so at the very end of, of this particular part of our timeline, we want it to play through this part of it. And then when it gets to the very end of it, we want it to just stop. So it won't play the next part of the animation for us. So again, just put our playhead at the very end of our, fir of our first animation in our timeline like so. And you'll notice it'll snap right into place for us. And let's go over here and say insert trigger. And again, we want to add a stop here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a stop. All right, and now let's drag our playhead over to here at the end of this one. At the very end of this particular animation, again, it'll snap into place for us here. And um, let's go ahead and do the same thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and I'm going to go ahead and say stop. All right, so now what's going to happen is the playhead is going to play is is not going to do anything until we hit the button then it's going to play through this first part of the animation and it's going to stop all right and then we hit the second button it'll play forward to the next one and then it'll hit stop and then when we do this one it'll play forward and play the next one and this is why I have this little gap in here between each of these so when it gets to the end of the animation we've got just a little gap here when and it makes things a little easier for us so again let's just go take a preview of this now so again I'm gonna do a command return here alright and let's see what happens here okay stop like so stop all right, like so, stop. So we're now getting really close to the end. We've got this working, but the one thing we would like to be able to do is have it so these apples disappear. So we only have one apple slide into the frame at a time, not like this, for instance. Instead, we want to have a nice blank uh, picture here or no picture here, and then we hit the button and it slides that one apple into view. All right, so that part looks like it's going to be hard, but it's really actually quite simple. So let's go back now, and let's go back to Edge Animate one more time. And what we want to do now is we want to add in some keyframes that turn the visibility of this apple on and off. So let's go ahead and drag our playhead to the very first one. Make sure that we have that apple selected. So go ahead and click on it here. And look right up here you'll see something that says always on for that apple and right now what it means is exactly what it says the apple will always be visible instead what I want to do is I want to change that to just on okay and you'll notice here when I do so I get a keyframe here that says this apple should be displayed okay now what I want to do is I want to drag my timeline my playhead all the way to the end of this particular part of my animation all right and um, make sure I have it selected again and um, I'm going to add another keyframe right here that's going to say just go ahead and leave this apple on okay now here's the part that's a little clever we're going to drag the playhead over to the beginning of our next animation all right and we still have this selected and we're going to turn this off all right, so you can see what's happening here. We've got a, a, a keyframe that says turn this animation on. We've got another one that says leave it on. And then right here at the beginning of this other animation, it turns that, that apple off. All right, so now we're going to do exactly the same thing here. So we're going to make sure that we have this apple selected. Again, it says always on. We're going to change that to on. It gives us a keyframe there. 
drag right here. All right. Okay. We're going to add another keyframe by adding by clicking right here. So now this apple is going to stay on for this entire part of our timeline. And then we're going to drag to right here the beginning of our last animation. And we want to turn that apple off. Okay. So what's going to happen now is when it plays this part of our timeline, it's going to turn off the apple before it. Okay. All right. So now let's see what happens here. So in theory, everything should work correctly now. So let's, let's go ahead and say preview. Again, I'm going to do a command return. That's going to open it in a web browser. All right. Got my first apple. Disappears. There's my next apple. It disappears, and there's my third apple. So now I've built a simple slideshow, and you can see that it all works correctly now. The last step I might want to do is actually clue in the user that these are actually buttons. So I'm going to go back here one more time, and we're going to add just one little tweak here. All right, so I've got my three buttons here, and what I want to do is actually have the cursor change so that it clues the person in that these are actually buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my first button here. I'm going to go down here to cursor, click on that. And in fact, I may have to slide over just a little bit so I can actually see it. And there's a button here called auto. Okay, and let me go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to change it, my cursor to a pointer when someone uh, moves over that particular button. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Change it to a pointer. All right. Last one right here. And the very same thing. Okay. So awesome. All right. So I've got three buttons here. Um, and um, now the cursor is going to change to a hand when it goes over each of them. The other thing I probably want to do here from a user, user interface standpoint is actually change the color of these buttons because they're all the same right now. So I'm going to click on my very first one. And that apple was kind of a deep red. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here and make it kind of a deep, make it kind of a deep red like so. All right. My next one was a brighter shade of red. So I'm going to click right here, make it a little brighter shade of red here. Make sure you have good contrast between these two buttons here because they're both red. And then my last one is easy. It's a kind of a bright green. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and make it kind of a green like so. All right, so now let's take a look and see how this looks. So when I move my, my cursor over each of these buttons now, it changes to a pointer like so. All right. So again, it works. Okay. And again, the last thing I might want to do is actually put text on each of these buttons here um, so that um, it labels them correctly. But, you know, for just for the sake of argument, I'm not going to do that just to make this all simple. All right. So that's how you make a slideshow um, using uh, Edge Animate.